next speaker is uh, Soledad Pico. She is from uh, University of Buenos Aires. Okay. And she is going to talk about uh, emotional memories. Please go on. Hi, how are you? I'm going to share my screen. As... Yeah, that's perfect. Wait a second. Yeah. Right below. Let me see. So you can share. You gonna see my share screen? Yes. So uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, reconsolidation and just a little quick introduction. So we don't have much time. So uh, a brief introduction for those who are not familiar with the terms. When you acquire a new memory. Uh, it is unstable or label, and after a period of time, this uh, memory is stabilized through the process called consolidation. Uh, by a presentation of a remind reminder, this memory can be reactivated and go back to an unstable or label stage. And uh, after a period of time, this memory can uh, restabilize uh, through a process known reconsolidation which allows the memory to update in strength or content. And amnesic agents can act over the unstable memory and interfere with this process. So in laboratory, uh, threat conditioning has been taken as the paradigm to assess fear memory and anxiety disorder related memories. And so this process of reconsolidation has been uh, proposed uh, to allow modify uh, that could that would allow modify this uh, maladaptive memories. So uh, in previous yeah. works in our lab, we design a threat conditioning uh, so in right. humans and some tasks to assess the cognitive system as uh, associated with that memory. So in the study I'm going to show you today, we want to step forward and uh, we want to see. Um, the effect of interfering the restabilization of this type of memory. So we designed this three day, three groups protocol, uh, where on day one, uh, subjects perform a threat conditioning uh, training session. On day two, they had a reminder or not, and they perform a high working memory uh, task or low working memory task. And on day three, Participants did uh, an extinction and restatement session that is uh, the classical uh, testing the retention of uh, this threat condition and memory. And also we added uh, some of the tasks that we used to uh, assess the cognitive bias of the, uh, that memory. So going deeper on the protocol, our threat conditioning uh, consists on uh, three male faces to our angry uh, expression and one is, has neutral uh, expression. And one of the angry faces, and this is counterbalance uh, between participants, is paired with an unpleasant tone. We call the face that is paired with the tone as CS plus, and the angry face that has no tone as CS uh, minus. And the measures we take are skin conductance response and US expectancy in an external keypad, uh, like a yes, no response, whether the sound is coming or not. So on day two for the reminder session, they only see one presentation of the CS plus in absence of the tone and the task get interrupted by an interruption sign displayed on the screen. On the day three, it's just a classical extinction and uh, followed by a restatement. And uh, for the interference task, um, in order to overload the transient memory system that has been reactivated by the uh, reminder uh, on day two, uh, we perform this space auditory serial addition test called PASAP that consists in a um, pre-recorded audio uh, that has a number series from one to nine and participants are asked to uh, add systematically the last two numbers they hear. For example, if they hear three, two, they have to say five, then nine, so 11, then eight, so 17. And we measure skin conductance level and proportion of correct responses. We call uh, this task high demanding working memory task or just high working memory task. 
And there is another group that performed the low demanding working memory task, or as uh, we like to call it, fake passat. And here, uh, this group here, the same pre-recorded audio, the, the one before, but instead of uh, adding, they just have to say whether the numbers are even or odd when they hear. So what we get uh, as uh, results in this study, uh, 67 uh, participants were included. We assess and um, find that there was no any uh, previous psychopathology. And we also assess working memory capacity and we found no difference uh, in between groups. And uh, when we go to uh, analyze the interference task, this auditory uh, addition task, we um, confirm the cognitive uh, demanding nature of the task because as we see both of the high working memories groups, the one with the reactivation and the no reactivation session, uh, both uh, exhibit higher arousal on the skin conductance level and worse performance when we see the proportional occurrence response in respect of the low uh, working memory uh, task. And when we go to see the implicit memory for all the three groups, the reactivation high working memory, no reactivated high working memory, and reactivated low working memory, through uh, the three days, we have the trials of acquisitions, the reminder on second day, and on the third day, the uh, extinction and restatement for all the three stimulus, uh, we see that the three groups uh, acquire the conditioning, the threat conditioning to the face and the tone. But what we found that the group that we have reactivated, so we labelized that memory, and after that, they perform the high working uh, memory task we see that that memory retention has faded. Uh, here you can see it on the first trial of extinction. So we uh, interfere um, that uh, memory restabilization on the implicit memory. When we see the declarative memory, as we expected, uh, there was uh, no difference found. And then uh, when uh, we did the cognitive um, task. I'm just going to show you two, then you can see our publications uh, to read more about it. I'm just going to be sure about this. Uh, one of the tasks is uh, stimuli representation. Uh, when uh, there are shown uh, 12 face faces, one after the other, some aversive, some neutral. And we asked the participant just to rank them from zero to eight, how implicit, uh, how unpleasant or aversive are they, these faces to them. And the three faces that we use for the conditioning are uh, mixed up in uh, these uh, faces. And they rank it on day one before doing the threat conditioning and in day three. So we can uh, uh, take the, the difference between those two days. And uh, the other task uh, they perform is evaluation task consisting in a probability and cost section that include uh, the faces from the, the CS plus and the CS minus, and they are involved in positive and negative scenarios, just hypothetical scenarios from uh, every day. And they have to rank these scenarios from zero to eight. And uh, they, can, they have different questions. Like for example, how likely and likely it will be, uh, for example, having uh, problems at work with Kim and, and they have to rank from zero to eight. And in course, they have how good, bad it would be and an hypothetical scenario. So when we go to see these results, we see that the reactivation uh, high working memory group, the one that we have interfered, the implicit memory, uh, show no difference between the CS plus and the CS minus. But in the other two groups that we did not uh, interfere, we see that they rank the CS plus as more aversive or unpleasant. And we see a similar effect when we analyze uh, the evaluation uh, results. There's no difference for the interference group between the CS plus and minus for positive, scenario, for positive and negative scenarios. And uh, for non-reactivated high working memory and reactivated low working memory, we see uh, that the CS plus is um, estimated higher probability and higher cost uh, for negative uh, scenarios. 
So in conclusion, uh, in this work, we analyzed what happened when we disrupt a threat uh, condition in memory reconsolidation in implicit declarative and cognitive bias uh, using a working memory task. We demonstrate that uh, the highly working memory task interfere the uh, memory restabilization. And we also saw that the effect depends on the cognitive load or cognitive demand because uh, we could interfere with a high working memory, but not with the low working memory task. Also, we see that some of the cognitive uh, processes were faded and uh, we hope our results open new venues to develop uh, reconsolidation, reconsolidation based interventions in clinical settings such as anxiety disorders. And I want to thank you all for listening and the host and my supervisions, uh, Maria Eugenia Pedreira and Rodrigo Fernandez and all my lab mates from Laboratorio de Neurociencias de la Memoria. You can contact us for more questions over here and just uh, additional information if you want to uh, know a little bit more of what I've been talking about today. So, Great. Thank you very much, Soledad. So, you're welcome. yeah. Is there any question for her? We have also one open Sorry, question. I'll make it quick. I, I thought we didn't have any time. <laughs> <laughs> we have some time. Okay. Okay, it was uh, answer the question to uh, Jorge. Is there any question for any of our panelists? Okay, if this is not the case, I just wanna uh, ask you, Soledad, uh, did you include uh, women and men uh, faces or were more, more like a... No, we only include uh, men faces. Okay. Because uh, on previous studies that uh, all the labs did uh, using these faces that are from the Karolinska uh, database of faces, and they show that uh, men faces were like uh, presented similar uh, skin conductance respond uh, whether it was women or men. And there are several studies that uh, women present a, a differential uh, skin conductance in women and men, and it, it depends in a lot of uh, physiological uh, aspects okay. related to that woman face. So we just uh, keep the standard protocol that it is used for, for threat conditioning. But we could use just square triangles and circles, and it will be the same as just the face allows you to ask a lot of uh, these cognitive questions. Like, you cannot ask somebody if they like more or not a square or circle. Just that why we choose uh, oh, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. So, are you considering using uh, another type of stimuli, or do you want to continue with the faces? Uh, we're going to continue on this because this uh, opened to us a lot of new questions. Oh, I see. So we're going to keep on that track. Okay. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we are almost finished this uh, session. I just want to thank to the panelists. Sorry for the technical issues we have today. But uh, yeah, please feel free to contact uh our speakers, and thank you for your time. So see you next time. Bye. Thank you.